I, I would kind of lean towards a duel or a tri-lane in the offlane just because uh, I'm cheating and I see as far as the rate of protection, but <laughs> <laughs> I suppose anything's possible here. It is, of course. Could also be the Queen of Paid Off and just a, a defensive tri-lane as well. And Well, it seems he everyone's heading bottom, so I guess we'll, we'll have to wait to find out. Right. Now they both have rate of protection, so now I have no idea. <laughs> yes, there, there goes your, yeah, your theories out the window. Right, so Secret versus Alliance. Game one between these two sides. My name's Odie Pixel. I'm joined here by LD Dota himself. And as we can see so far on the side of Alliance, we can have Ake on the IO Magica on that support. I can imagine like Pycat is going to be running the Lina. Niqua on the Batrider and Loder himself on the Chaos Knight. And well, LD, what's going on on this side of the Bradian? Uh, on the Radiant side, we've got Puppy on the Shaker. Starts off with the Ward's Boots first Rubik for Kuroki. Looking to make some early plays. S4 will be handling your Brewmaster. Zai, or whatever the hell. Do you, you ever <laughs> want to try to say this name? Are you feeling brave today? Oh, God. Because Go I'm so, sure not. No, I think we'll stick with Zai. Whatever that is on the Pain. And, and we got RTZ on the Shadow Feed. Okay, a little bit of a potential fight here around this bottom rune. Both teams. Send a lot down. Loader, in fact, bringing S4 in for a quick slap, but there's a telekinesis back up to the high ground with the raise. The Fisher blocking them up already. Loader, he's kind of on his own, but is the damage there from Secret? And it doesn't look like it is. Okay, they're holding on to him dearly. There's your light strike Ray. Can Alliance turn this around? Arteezy getting fairly low. Loader wants to chase this one down. He is going to have another reality rift in about five seconds, but the raise is bringing him low. Arteezy trying to man up, but Arteezy is actually a man down. Niqua drawing first blood there We're onto the Shadow Fiend. Oh man, the yeah, I think Puppy. Puppy. They're running in. They don't have Ignite anymore, but they do have the tether move speed. And Puppy has no boots. He's already sped his gold. He's almost expecting to die for this one more club. Can they get the job done? No. They get fogged. Nice jukes by Puppy, though. He's got to walk back to Fountain. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's better to die, but it's about the same thing in terms of how long he's out of the game. <laughs> that was crazy. Both teams could have backed, but Pycat was just standing there like, no, we're taking this fight. Throws out the stun. The Shadow Fiend was trying to right-click him the whole time, but Arteezy went for raises, so at that point, you know, it's it's just a, it's a level 1 Shadow Fiend. He, doesn't, he hits like a kitten, and he'd already used his raises, so why not? And it just ends up working out really well. That was a surprisingly good fight for Alliance. They're up against the Shaker at level 1. It looked like Puppy had opportunity to just Fissure Block one hero off, but uh, ended up that Alliance oh, just had these tanky frontliners, the Chaos Knight as well as the Ogre, and... You know, once the cast knight got low, he started running away, and then Loda came back in a little bit later on in the fight, and it seemed like it seemed like Secret went for the bait. Like, okay, we can get this chaos knight, but he's beefy, man. Stout shield, four armor, six hundred HP at level one, and you know, then the ogre started taking the punishment in the front lines, and well, a great start here for Alliance getting that first blood. Indeed, and I think it's really worth pointing on uh, what you were mentioning about the fact of the Chaos Knight being tanky. You've also got this Ogre in this lane, and they're going to be backed up by Ake, who has, of course, now got the bottle on Io. So this is going to be a very, very tanky, aggressive tri-lane. It is. At the same time, it's kind of hard to find kills here if the Fissure is used defensively, but uh, it may... They may be able to, especially if Seeker go to pull. For now, it's Alliance pulling Puppy, and they get the two seconds done. He's not taking tower aggro right now, though. So it looks like he may be okay. Clap coming out on two. They're still diving Puppy, committing heavily for this one. They may turn back to S4, though. That brew, one second stun. More right clicks. There's your stick. I don't know if it's enough to tether. They get the kill. Oh, man. Alliance going ham in the tri lane. And it's absolutely working out. Chaos Knight, one of the other weaknesses of him, of course, being that his intelligence gain and his mana pool in turn aren't great. And the fact he's got this Aya backing him up allows him to be really aggressive. I would have liked to get that rune, but Puppy is going to take it from poor old Ake. So Ake might even think about heading back to base uh, to get that bottle recharged. And uh, looking elsewhere on the map, mid lane, Lena versus SF. Fairly even at the moment. Pycat with a slight advantage. Pycat came very low here. It's easy. Hasn't got another raise for a few seconds, so Pycat's going to be all right this time. Top lane, this Queen of Pain solo off lane dealing up against this bat. And Quap doing fairly well. 13 CS against the bat, 6, so it's, it's a pretty good lane for Zy up here. Yeah, and the bat rider got the first blood, so it's, uh, it's a tough lane by default. He already has the boots. Uh, we'll see if he wants to go straight into Tranquils or maybe picks up a bottle along the way. Uh, the other thing mid lane, Arteezy had a regenerate, so that makes a big difference here against a, a hero like Lina. Someone who can normally harass you out of lane and even threaten to kill you early if you get out of position. But with the regen rune, he, he could afford to play a little more greedy as soon as the... Basically, as soon as that uh, that 
Dragon Slave comes out, that's when you look to use your bottle charges. So he tanked the Dragon Slave, then he immediately pops the regen, and now Arteezy is in pretty good shape. Lena, known for being a lane dominator, definitely a hero that gives Shadow Fiend problems early on, and also a hero that can just easily kill him once once the Lena hits six. But bottom lane, looks like we got more action. They caught out S4, or maybe S4 caught out them. Yeah, nice Fisher from Puppy there turning that one around. It's going to be the S4 getting very low. Loda trying to rift him back towards him. Loda's going to have to back out of this one. Magic is left in the thick of it, but Puppy and Kuroki haven't got anything to throw down on him. So even though they go across, they've got to be careful with Ake's positioning because, well, the side of secret, they can blow that wisp up pretty quickly. Very squishy. It is... It is probably the main weakness of the wisp in the, in the early stages of the game. Before you... If you're not getting runes, and if you're not getting your levels, uh, the hero is uh, naturally very easy to burst down. Zero base armor, pretty low HP pool, and you know, just, just caught on the wrong side of the fissure that time around. But still, I think the lane is going okay for Alliance so far. You look at their overall game plan, and you know, thanks to Nikwa getting the first blood, he's already got a bottle picked up. If he's just able to get a pl quick blink dagger, Pycat gets level 6, which he has now. There's a lot of kill potential. The Batrider can basically rotate bottom and, and win them the lane, so... Uh, I'm keeping my eyes on mid though. Pycat, uh, all it takes is like a Dragon Slave and a Laguna, and Arteezy will die. He is currently waiting for his bottle, and you can see Pycat's like, "Hey, go, go ahead and creep, man. I dare you." But he's not gonna, he's not gonna take that risk. Yeah, Arteezy's got to be very, very careful now in this position. It's gonna be hard for him to clear the waves with this Lina watching him very carefully with the Laguna Blade. This ping's coming out in the jungle. There's no stacks actually being created yet for the Shadow Fiend on the side of the Radiant. There's actually a rotation oh, as well. Look at this Arteezy, Look yeah, at <laughs> they want him, they want his head, Loader and Ake rotating in, they want to try and cut round behind him as well, Magica on the high ground, zoning back the Earthshaker, now Arteezy's a little bit too far in, can they capitalise on this Loader, there's the bolt, and he's going to get a nice long stun with that one, there's going to be Magica as well, trying to stun him up in the rift, bringing him over the Fisher, and that's one thing you got to think about, Chaos Knight works pretty well against an Earthshaker, because Fisher, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, that reality riff works pretty well. Man, you know, the crazy part is both teams, like, knew exactly what was happening. Obviously, yes. Alliance <laughs> know they're ganky mid, and there's a ward here bottom for Secret, and they saw it. They had the Earthshaker mid specifically to defend against that type of movement, but I think Mad coming from the from the north surprised them a little bit. They do not have a rune ward at the top rune, and uh, really no vision there at all, as our rune is going to spawn. It's a, a haste bottled up for Ake, and they may look to dive Kuro here bottom. Oh, they got him. It's going to be a Telekinesis, he's going to get the stun onto Aya, but yeah, Magica with that speed chasing him down. S4's coming in with a clap with the slow, it's not quite enough. Aya finds that, and maybe S4 goes down as well. Loader thinking about going in. Oh, oh, he's going to get tethered. Pycat going yeah. in for the solo kill on Arteez. He doesn't have the mana for the ultimate, but he's got it now. Is it good enough? Turn for the Laguna? No, he can't get in range. Oh, he thought he had that solo kill. Arteez even got caught by the Light Strike Ray. It's not an easy spell to just hit without a setup stun, but yeah. Not able to get a range for that Laguna. That was a close call. It was very close indeed, Pycat. Not going to be too happy, but at the same time, doesn't mean he's still got it. So Arteezy's still going to be very careful about coming into the lane. And Arteezy, yeah, he's going to head back and stack some of these camps up now, coming up to the seven minute mark, and look to find a bit of safer farm there. And talking about farm, talking about this aggressive trialing, Chaos Knight at the moment, 30 CS up against the 27 of S4. And it, S4 actually was doing a lot worse earlier, but he's managed to catch up. Needs to be careful. Loader actually having a little bit of a switch round through the trees there. There's going to be the bolt onto Kuroki, trying to get the hits in. Ake getting fairly low, though, to S4 and Puppy. I think the Chaos Knight is going to lose his wisp. And CK has to get out of that one. And uh, again, well, Alliance, they try and go a little bit aggressive with the Io and the Chaos Knight, but Io just getting caught out. Uh, that, was, that was pretty greedy. They, they do not have their Ogre there. They, they don't have Vision either on, on Secrets. They have no idea where these supports are, but in the end, I think they wanted to back. Oh, Arteezy, that's a four-second stun, but oh, they need the plus one to come in a little bit sooner. They can't get it now. Mad pull back into tower. I can also come in and straight Lacuna to the face. That was basically a full HP Rubik, it felt like, but not any longer. Now the Quap! Zai, what a play. He wipes all three with the ultimate combo. They do end up getting Arteezy in the end. It's a three for two. It's not that bad yet, but now they hunt down Loda. They want to catch him out. Zai, excellent rotation on this crate of pain. Looking for a bit more blink forward. He's going to snipe that bounty rune, and now they continue to chase on to Loda. Gets the two seconds done, but back up inbound. They slow him down with the Shadow Strike, and it looks like one more slap. Can they get it? He's fast. He's got the high base move speed, but 
Oh, I think he may take down in this final shower strike. No, he's got the most stick charges. He may have to oh. play one more blink in from Zai. <laughs> Big commitment there. Oh, man. Zai? They're not done yet. They yeah. want to fight more. Can find more if Brew finds the clap. He hasn't quite got the mana for 10 mana short at the moment. Back getting tethered up. I don't know if Nico and uh, the Io can do anything here against these two. Brewmaster now level 6 has got the primal split. Gonna be able to bottle himself up an Invis rune as well. But 8 for 6, and as you said, bang on rotation there from Zai, really bringing him into the game. Four kills now and 1500 gold suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, just appearing in the Queen of Pain's pockets. Man, what a slugfest. It started, it's 8 to 6 at 9 minutes. We have almost almost 2 kills per minute. The dream is real so far, but they're going to make their rotation now. They want to catch up on levels here. Get the Wisp level 6. The, the tri-lane achieved what it wanted to, which was to try and slow down the Brewmaster a bit. Unfortunately, uh, with that those 3 kills going the way of Secret, it wasn't quite as much of a success as they would like. But now mid lane, S4, there's your split on the Pycat. Oh, beautiful timing there. Artsy was there to back him up, and the split coming through before the light strike lands down on the brew. Nine to six, and well, with this, Artsy with this ready with to Panda. push. He's got to find oh, the yeah. bat rider. Man, nice bit of micro. Just, just annoying okay. the bat. It's a, it's a bit. His eyes coming in as well. Hasn't got the ultimate for twenty seconds, so not enough burst to deal with the bat. But it's going to create space and secret. They're going to be able to take the tier one in the mid lane. Man, if that, if that Cyclone actually set up a kill, that would have been one of the sickest plays ever for Brewmaster. It's like, okay, he splits mid, he gets a kill, whatever. But that, that next level going for the second kill. Uh, unfortunately, Queen of Pain was a bit too far away. So I used his Blink immediately to try and get a range for his ultimate Scream combo, but just couldn't close the gap. And now, OD, they do have their Blink Day on the Batrider. As well as Laguna online, this could be an opportunity here bottom lane for Lions to go and get something done. I'm certainly looking for it. And who's in the lane at the moment? It's Kuro's out the most, and they're going to go straight for the Rubik. They want the easy kill. They might not even need to use the Laguna Blade here. Telekinesis does get cast onto the Lina, but S4 and now mid lane. in range. Zai is hunting this Ogre. He's a beefcake, though. Not an easy kill. Gets the stun off, but backup's coming in. And oh, I don't know if Zai wants to commit too much for this. There's your slow. He's already he's got the Blink off cooldown now. And he's going to turn. There's your Quad Bolt. Gets the frag. And... Oh, a little bit too slow to rotate. Alliance don't have their tier one anymore, and they couldn't get the, the back up there in time. Again, this Zai Quop doing absolute wonders for the side of Secret. And he's going to come up top and, and try and force Loader back, because there's going to be a TP in as well from Rubik. If this slow is there, which it is, they could try and catch Loader out here. Loader, he's all alone. There's no one to back him up. He's trying to fight up against the Rubik, but it's not enough damage, and he will go down. Rubik, Kuroki taking that kill, and now here's the rotation from Alliance, but blinking from S4 is revealed. He's got it online. That's Yelena going down. Magica throwing everything he can onto the Queen of Pain. And well, Zai might think to chase this, and he certainly will. Blinks up to the up the lane, and Magica is going to take a dagger to the backside. Blinking out of from S4. Man. This is Ogre going down. Hey, this is three heroes down on the side of Alliance. And from a game that was, I think we we're eight to six a minute ago, suddenly to 13 to seven, Secret just running across the map and causing a lot of problems for Alliance. The offlane cop. The lane top was okay for the Batrider. He, he went off to the jungle, he was farming his stacks. I think Zai was out CSing him, but it wasn't, you know, it's not a big deal. Your Batrider gets his blink and starts to have a huge impact, but it's just that one fight mid where Zai shows up, gets the three kills, and ever since then, it feels like Secret have just had that plus one, and if anyone should have a plus one, it should be Alliance with the Wisp, but unfortunately, Ake okay, still not level six. 12 minutes in, he, he really needs to get this so they can start trying to ambush some heroes as they're going to find a pick bottom on Puppy. He gets caught by the lasso, loaded to follow this up, and an easy kill with the three seconds stun. They they definitely need more of that. And again, the, the key thing, kind of the linchpin at this point is get Ake level six and start finding those kills around the map because your Lina is not farming particularly well. The Yule Scepter still a ways off for PyCat and... You know, ultimately, Chaos Knight doesn't have Empower this game, no Magnus on his side, and he's not a tiny. He doesn't flash farm. He, they really need, once they get the relocate, to start racking up kills around the map.
Indeed, they're doing. Magica, looking at the builder, it's interesting he hasn't put any points in Bloodlust yet, because that is going to really assist Loda in getting those crits through. But at the same time, well, Loda on this Chaos Knight build, not putting any points into the Chaos Strike yet, just maxing out the Bolt and the Rift, which has certainly been working out for him getting the kills, and obviously just the fact that the crit is going to be more relevant in the late game. And maybe as the game gets later, and if we do get to later portions, we'll start to see the power of the Chaos Knight being backed up by the Bloodlust and the IO as well. But they're going to need to get there in secret. They're certainly doing their best to shut down the game as quick as they can. 13 to 8, if we're looking at the XP in gold, it's coming up to a 5k lead in XP and a 5k lead in gold as well. So secret, definitely in a very comfortable position. Yeah, you know, if it goes late, it's it's kind of a tough game for Alliance. Even though they have the Chaos Knight, the problem is that He's an illusion-based carry, so he's not a great MKB carrier, and you're up against a Brewmaster. Uh, that's where I think you pretty much have to get your BKB, but still, he's got evasion, you've got Drunken Haze to worry about at some point, perhaps Arteezy is going to build a butterfly, and I think as the game goes later, it'll be tough for Alliance just to try it. If they had the farm, like if you give this Cast Knight six slots, I think he's one of the scariest late gear. Oh, Kuroki caught out at the bottom rune. Oh, he's by Nikla. very nice light strike array that he stole to hold Pycat back. And now the Orchid from Zai. Zai is going to find that kill. Nikla, he can't clean up Kuroki. Kuroki, he's managed to get out. Nikla will TP away and Puppy can't quite find uh, the, uh, the range to catch him. I, with I, the I, I don't know if, if we had a chance to talk about it, but that is a, I think that was a sub 14 minute off lane co-op Orchid. Now, <laughs> to be fair, Zai was technically 1v1, so it's not really like the traditional off lane, but... That is, that is a very fast Orchid, and on the back of it, I mean, what do you really do if you're alive? They have no one even close to a BKB, a Yule Scepter, a Manta Style, a Diffusal Blade. There's just nothing to deal with the Silence, and Wisp, Wisp is just food at this point for that Queen of Pain, and hey, yo, bottom lane, we're gonna have our big clash. First relocate of the game, but it's into a three-hero Fissure clap. They might all just drop here. Requiem they get deleted from the fight practically now. They're diving onto Pycat with their Bruce Blade. Another Blake forward. Secret just wrecking Alliance in these fights. Zai may go down though. That's a big streak to end, but unfortunately, it's Mad who gets the kill. Your Ogre getting it. Not really ideal. Though they'll take it. They try to turn it around here. Loda doing good damage. It ends up being a four for three in the end. And they end the big kill streak of the Queen of Pain. Oh, that turns out pretty well in the end for Alliance, all things considered. Well, it certainly does. They did have to buy back on the Aya, but it was just the Aya buying back. So an absolute uh, worthy purchase. And yeah, four heroes down on the side of Secret and shutting down Zai. That is going to be a, a nice gold swing and a bit going towards Alliance. And that was definitely the fight that they needed after what was pretty kind of a rough and rocky early game for them. Well, OD, do you, do you believe in the comeback here? Are you, you feeling I, it for I Alliance? Think, yeah, I think they can. I mean, as you, you know, Io hitting level 6 now with the relocates. If they can find some pickoffs and they can get loaded of those big items online, he did go for the Midas. He's got a lot of money on top of it. And in fact, he's just brought something. What was it? It's, uh, oh yeah, he's getting his uh, armlet finished as soon as possible. Actually building the, uh, picking up the recipe as the first item, kind of. I don't know what's up with it. Uh, LD, can you, can you shine some light on that for me? Uh, as far as the Midas goes, you're saying? Uh, no, but no, the um, loader. He's just picked up the recipe for the armlet, but he doesn't have any of the of the other components for it. Oh, so he got the early gloves of haste, uh, and I think he was planning on building the armlet, and then ah, see okay, how the so, game's okay. going. Loda's thinking, okay. yeah, we're we're playing from behind now. We're not gonna be able to snowball this, and so I need to go back for Midas. I actually think it's a really underrated item on Chaos Knight. Uh, the farming deficiencies of the hero are one thing. Obviously, as I mentioned, the one exception is if he has an empower of bottom lane. I think we'll maybe study up here, but wow, armlet suddenly complete. There's your recipe, and he's got the money to buy it from the side shop. All of a sudden, this Chaos Knight get pretty far, but he is a very level dependent here. You really want to get the crit maxed out, as he pointed out earlier. He didn't even have a point in it up until now, uh, which I think is a, a fine choice in Chaos Knight. I don't think the crit does too much early, but well, as you head into the mid and the late game, you really need it to get those quick burst kills, but... Yeah, once Phantasm getting maxed is a big deal. That's where the hero really starts to be a threat, especially if you get get the plus one illusions on top of it, then you've got a, a nice large army of, of knights running around. So uh, I think I think given the, that one fight bottom, uh, all of a sudden, it, I'm with you, man. It feels like Bloodlust and Chaos Knight, uh, BKB no longer removes this either. It doesn't get purged. So uh, it, could be a, it could be a potent tool to have. The Chaos Knight Ogre duo, as well as that Wisp at their side. It's, it's a Superman Chaos Knight, potentially, but uh, the Wisp is very squishy, and it may not end up living much in this game. 
And well, we so see. Make their move towards mid. Yeah, Loader actually using the Phantasm to push down the tier two. And it does manage to force out a fortification. Yeah, as you said, mid lane, the fight could potentially kick off Kuroki. He has stolen the old Firefly. He gets himself out there. Alliance not ready to dive that far and go too aggressive. There's going to be a TP into mid from the Brew. Has got the primal split. Alliance, they're not hanging around anytime soon, though. We see Magica backing Man. straight on Pycat getting out there as well. They really need this Yules on Pycat. But, you know, by the time he gets it, there may be a BKB on Arteezy. He's already up to 2,000 gold with an Ogre Club. Uh, S4, no BKB coming for him. He goes for Vlad's. But your Queen of Pain also has an Ogre Club and 1,200 gold. And that's where the Yules starts to fall off a lot. You can still use the Yules Light Strike Ray to get kills on supports, but.